Hi friends, Kaylee with Kaylee's Canvases here. Today I'm coming to you because I just wanted to paint a simple um, background, but I wanted to show you guys, I promised you the other day that I would show you guys how to paint a tree. Um, I did show you guys how to paint a simple birch tree with a few easy steps, but today I'm going to teach you how to paint like a regular, maybe like an oak or maple tree, or just something you might find a very common tree in your backyard. Um, and so right now what I have with me, um, I have for paint brushes, I have a large flat brush, I have a large round brush, medium round brush, and a small round brush. And this is really so I can get in those fine details on some of the branches. Um, I have some different colors with me for the background. I figure we just play around and try it. It does not really matter um, what background color you use because I'm really going to focus mostly on the tree in this picture. Um, on my paper plate that I reuse a lot, you'll see I have some black and some white. That's all I put on this one for now. But I do have some other colors with me, and it doesn't really matter. Um, for this painting, just because I want to show you some simple technique, I'm just going to use some cheap craft paint right now. So I've got some turquoise, uh, some mint green, uh, some aqua sky, and some golden yellow. And we're just going to kind of play around just to see what colors might, might look nice in this, in this sky. But it doesn't really matter um, how we do it. If you have different colors, that's absolutely fine. We might even grab another color while we're doing this. All right, but I am going to start off with my large flat brush. I'm going to get it slightly damp, okay? And, and then I'm going to use um, just a bit of the Aqua Sky. All right, I don't need a lot for this, and I'm just going to put it right on my canvas just a little bit. I don't need to go crazy. I have a tendency to add too much paint to my plate when I get going, um, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to add a little bit um, because I kind of want to put in some of, that, some of that nice golden yellow color in here too, but I really like this aqua sky color. All right, so I'm just going to lightly blend it down here because this is where I want a lot of my yellow to be. And I and you don't want to have too much blue because what will happen is if you have too much blue, um, it because I'm going to be painting with yellow, um, it'll mix and it'll turn to... Um, It'll turn to like a, a lime green color, like a really bright green. So I don't want to do that. Um, we might, we're probably going to even end up with a slightly um, green hint to it anyways. A green hue. Um, but I just want to get some basic colors. So I'm doing the sides of my canvas as you know I usually do. Alright, and this is really not important. Just cover the canvas with whatever color you want to use for your sky. You can get creative, you can use purple, you can use um, you can use pinks, reds, really whatever color. All right, I'm going to rinse off my brush and then I'm going to dry it so that way I don't blend too much for this next step. So what I did was I got I got most of the paint concentration up on top. Um, and I, I really thinned it out here. I do not have a super huge amount of blue down here. You can kind of see how it's starting to fade out. All right, so I am going to go in with yellow. Okay. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit. All right, I don't want a lot. I don't know if this is going to work great or not, but we'll try it. If we end up with a little bit of a green background, that's okay. Really, this painting is just to show you guys um, how a tree, how we can get some details for a realistic tree. All right, and I'm just going to gently blend. I am getting some green, and that's okay. I kind of like it. I just wanted something bright and cheery today. It might have been my choice of yellow that I picked, because the yellow I picked was a lot brighter than the blue, or than the blue that I picked. The blue was a light blue, but my yellow was a very bright yellow. So I'm just going in and just blending it to kind of give it a nice, even, almost like a, a sunset kind of look. 
Green is not a usual color you would get in a sunset. A lot of times you get pinks and purples and, you know, different things like that. But on occasion, you can maybe see a little bit of a hint of green in your sunset. So this is going to be a little different than normal, but it still looks fun. And I'm just blending it till I'm content with the way it looks. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And I do wanna get some mountain in here. All right, but the mountain is really just for fun. All right, so I'm going to take my turquoise. I'm gonna put a little bit on my plate. I don't need a lot. And I'm gonna use my my flat brush for this still. Um, even though it's a big flat brush, I'm still gonna use it. I'm not gonna get a lot of paint on my brush because I don't care if it's a little uh, faded or soft in this background because I want the mountains, if you ever look at the mountains in the background, they almost look a little foggy, like faded and blending in with the sky a little bit, like they're kind of far away. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm just going to kind of drag my brush and I'm kind of gonna, I'm not letting it be stable. I'm kind of going in with maybe like um, a shaky hand a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go in and just pull some colors. Just pulling on my brush. And here's the thing about painting. Sometimes when we paint, we go in with a plan. A lot of times when we paint, we go in with no plan. Right now, my plan is to show you how to paint a tree. So as for the background, I'm not really going in with a plan for this. And that's okay. A lot of times painting is just experimenting to see what you like. And you can add in different layers to your mountains just by taking your brush and going in with different amounts of paint different curves when you're doing it. This almost looks like it's maybe like a late night hike for somebody. Like maybe they're, they climbed up to the top of a mountain and they're looking down. It's late spring, early summer. There's a lot of green. Okay. And we're just going to pull it across. I'm going to put a little bit of blue all over the bottom. This part, this is not important. I'm going to actually blend in some green for this too. But this part is not important. Just getting colors in here. I, I really wanted bright colors today. And this, this background is going to be really insignificant because um, we're going to put some trees in here. I'll show you how to get all those little details in the branches of the tree and then I'll even show you how to add on little buds of the tree. All right, so I'm just going to add in some blue on the end of my canvas. And now I did say I did show you I have some mint green, so I'm going to go in with a little bit of mint green, not a lot. I'm just going to add a little bit to my plate so I don't overdo it on my canvas. And if you need more, you can always add more. All right, I'm going to kind of blend this in. And now you can kind of see how some of my yellow shows through from, uh, from when I was doing the background and I had the mountains going on here. And I kind of like that because it kind of looks like the sun is, is still hitting parts of, parts of the mountains. I can't tell if it's if it's morning, if it's sunrise, or if it's if it's the sunset, but we can leave that up to our imagination. Alright, I'm just getting the sides of my canvas. You guys know I'm crazy about that. Even though this is not a super professional painting of mine. I'm going to rinse off my brush and set it to the side. 
Um, and now, so the way I did it was I kind of wanted to, I used the mint green down here so it was a little bit softer. It wasn't quite such a bright yellow like up here. And the reason for that, I almost wanted it to kind of look like a soft, um, uh, like a soft uh, misty look to it. So my guess is this probably is morning time. I might actually add just a little bit more of that mint green to kind of soften it up a little bit. All right, so I kind of wanted to give it like that soft, misty, um, maybe a little bit of foggy um, sky in the mountains. All right, and then maybe up here we have like another set of mountains, which we can use our black for. All right, I love that the sky is like a very clear sky. It's not super active. There's no rain clouds rolling in or anything. It's just... You know, that time of year where there's a temperature change in the springtime and there's a lot of fog. All right, so um, for this step, you would want to make sure your background is dry. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to blow dry my background with my hair dryer. Um, I am going to uh, pause my video just for, it's probably only going to take me like one to two minutes to do this. So if you're doing this, pause me, blow dry your background, get this dry. And then we'll go into some more details that are closer up. So I'll be right back. All right, so it only took me like 45 seconds to dry my canvas. I just don't like having the loud noise on the camera. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with maybe like a, a little mountain that's higher up and closer here. Um, and we can use, we can use either brush. I think I might use my large round brush for this. You can use your flat brush, but I just cleaned it a whole bunch of times. So I'll go in with my um, large round brush. I'll get it a little bit damp. I don't want it to be dripping wet, so you can even dry it off on your on your um, paper towel when you're done. All right, but I'm going to mix in some of this blue and this black to give me kind of like a little mountain edge here. All right, so it's not... Um, super black but it gives us kind of like um, a hint of color too still all right and it's okay if it's not perfectly blended together All right, I kind of like sometimes when there's some variation in the colors where you get some mixtures of maybe like a lighter blue and then the streaks of black that go through it. Makes it look a little bit more realistic with shadows. Okay, so I'm just going in and now I'm covering this part. The reason I chose this brush was just because I'm just doing a small portion of my canvas. If I was doing a large portion, I would have chosen my large flat brush. But I'm just doing a small portion. And this is kind of going to look like, um, almost like a mountain, but this is more, this will be a cliff edge when we're done. And I can even add in maybe a little bit more blue all right and I'm just kind of right now I'm just bringing this in just for color and effect so it gives us some contrast some shadows and some highlights you know and it kind of looks like the sun is hitting the mountains, but it ha it's not hitting the, the cliff edge here. Okay. If you want to add in some more black, feel free. Okay. And so for this, because of the colors that we have going on, my tree that I'm going to create um, will be will be black with some blue in it. All right, so we'll be using these colors again. I am going to, I'm not gonna start off from the base. I'm kinda gonna have like the base a little bit more forward here where this is kinda of a close up and the trees and the limbs and the branches will come out here. 
Okay, so I'm going to start off with um, just a mixture of the blue and black. And I'm still using my large round brush because for right now we're going to do the trunk of the tree. All right, so I'm going to start off over here and I'm just going to push my brush down. And right now I just want a shape for the tree. All right, and I'm kind of twisting as I go up, still keeping my brush um, wobbly, but I was going lighter, applying less and less pressure the higher up I got so it would get a little thinner. Okay, and I can thicken this as I go back over and refine things. Okay, so we're just going in and thick, thickening the trunk of this tree. All right, and I can add one over here if I want to, or maybe it's coming off the edge and going to come in. We can always add that later, though. We'll wait and see how this tree turns out. All right, and so I'm going to, I can either switch brushes or continue using this large one. All right, but I'm applying less and less pressure and that's how I get those thinner lines and I'm just using a very unsteady hand so if you have an unsteady hand naturally this works really great for you but if you don't have a naturally unsteady hand let's say your hand is pretty smooth you're gonna have to make your hand unsteady so that way you get those um, those details those shaky curvy details all right so I'm gonna make another a big branch over here Okay, and I'm just going to have it come in. And I'm twisting my brush as I go so I can kind of get some some nice um, smooth yet kind of curvy lines. And you're applying more pressure at the base and you're going to get use less and less pressure as you get higher up. Now one thing you want to keep in mind with your um, with your paintbrush is whenever you're painting trees like really thin lines you want your paint to be um, thin you don't want it to be super thick paint so if you're painting with a thick acrylic paint um, you wanna you want to kind of water it down with something all right um, you can either do that on your canvas. The nice thing about craft paint is craft paint is already pretty thin. Every once in a while you do end up with a thick craft paint and you might have to water it down a little bit. But it's really not hard. Your brush, when you rinse off your brush, will absorb water. And, and it, it holds on to water. And you can see, like, just doing this. So I could add this water, like if I was doing it on my plate, I could add this water into my paintbrush, but just, or into my paint just by dipping my paintbrush in the water and putting it on my plate and mixing it while it's still holding on to so much water okay so that being said whenever you feel that your water or your paint is getting too dry or too thick um, maybe it's not thin enough you just gotta water it down a little um, and sometimes even thin paint, paint as you're getting further out can feel a little dry or maybe even painting with it for an hour or so when it's getting kind of dry. Just add a little bit of water and you can kind of thin it down. Alright, so I'm going to rinse off this brush and I'm going to switch to a uh, my medium brush. Alright, my medium round brush. And I'll save my my really small uh, round brush for the fine details at the end. All right, so I'm gonna go in for that bluish black color. All right, and now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make more of those branches. And you can use your hand to kind of you know your pinky. Like I'm gonna rest my pinky on the canvas to kind of guide my hand a little bit. All right, but now I'm gonna go in and just making some really um, rocky motions. All right, and remember, you want your your branches to be thicker at the base than they are up here. All right, so if, a lot of times when I'm painting, sometimes I might get a, a section that's a little too thick, 
and you can just correct that by thickening up other parts of the branch. All right, some trees are more jagged than others with their branches, but honestly, if you look at almost all trees have very, very jagged um, branches at the end. So don't be afraid to make some really jagged, unsteady lines. All right, and this is really the key to painting trees is those jagged, unsteady lines where you control the pressure of your paintbrush. All right, so I'm gonna make a branch here. All right, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna start applying less and less pressure so we can get some thin lines. All right, and another one. Start off with more pressure and do less and less pressure to get thin lines. All right, and when you're painting also, you can even move your canvas. Like sometimes it's easier when I paint with my, you know, if I'm doing trees and I paint upside down, because it's easier for me to pull my hand down or out a little bit than it is to go up or up and out. All right, so it's, for me, it's easier to go down and down and out than it is to go up and up and out. So just find something that's easier for you. All right, and so, um, a lot of times for beginners, the smaller brushes are better when starting out because you can apply more pressure and, um, you know, to get those thicker branches, it's easier to apply more pressure than it is to apply less pressure. So just play around and see what's easy for you. Honestly, the best way to get good at, en at any painting is just to practice. All right, don't be afraid to practice. All right, so I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of branches. All right, apply, uh, you know, applying those same tricks that I taught you. All right, and something also to keep in mind. So like if you're looking at trees, you're gonna notice like the, um, the trunk of the tree or the big fatter limbs of the tree are a little more smooth on the edges and it's these little branches that are jagged. So when you're doing it, you can use a little bit more smoothness here, but don't eliminate all of the smooth smoothness. You really do still have bumps and curves to your trees. Um, and don't be afraid to look at nature. Nature is the best uh, reference photo that we have when we're painting. All right, and also something you do is if you think a branch is too small, you can always go in and make it thicker. Just because you paint it one way doesn't mean that you can't change it up. You know, and the other thing is too, you want to make as many branches as you can coming off of this tree because that is going to definitely make it look more realistic. Sometimes you do have trees that are um, a little scarce on branches. All right, but for the most part, branches or trees have tons of branches. Kind of like the hairs on our heads. We have so many hairs on our heads, we can't even count them. It's kind of the same thing with trees. And so right now my paintbrush is pretty damp still. So that's why I'm able to get these nice smooth lines. All right, and I'm still continuing to dip it in water um, to make sure my paint stays thin and damp. Okay, and we're just going to add as many branches as we want. And you can move your canvas around. Another, another little thing, I rarely ever use an easel. Sometimes I will, 
but very rarely will I ever use an easel. Usually my easels are for if I don't want to get my, my table um, dirty, but to be honest, like I would rather sacrifice a table than than uh, my painting. I'm a little too OCD with my paintings, so, you know, a lot. don't um, feel that you need to have the whole artist set up where you get, you know, an easel and everything. I don't use an apron and I don't use an easel. I only use aprons at paint parties when I'm going around and leaning over people and I have to look nice, but most of the time when I'm painting for myself, I just use an old t-shirt or something. You don't have to go broke being an artist, buying all the most expensive everything. You can buy cheap stuff if you want, and there's little tricks that you can do to everything to make it work for you. As long as you're having fun and you're learning, that's what's the most important learning and getting better and having fun. And we will add some um, highlights to this as well, where we might see like um, highlights from the sun coming up. Because because we're doing this black, we don't have to worry about shadows because we've already got enough shadows in here. But we'll add, um, we'll add little highlights in a little bit. I personally, and other people might disagree, I personally think um, a lot of times it's easier to add highlights than it is to add shadows. Um, but it, it all depends on what you're painting and how you're painting it. But when I paint trees, I usually most of the time paint them dark and I'll add the highlights to them. All right, and keep in mind when you're doing this, be careful for these little tiny branches. We're using very, very minimal, very minimal pressure. Like I'm barely touching the canvas for these teeny tiny lines. It's not easy to keep your paintbrush that far above your canvas where it's barely touching it, but that's why I use my pinky. You'll notice my pinky right here is there to steady my hand, not to keep my hand steady for a straight line, but to keep it at a certain height above my canvas. All right, and don't be afraid to make your um, branches go in all sorts of directions. You might have some broken limbs, uh, some limbs that are kind of curved or going off in weird directions. They don't all need to go in the same perfect um, direction. All right, but also to keep in mind, there are usually little branches off of little branches off of little branches. Now, if I was going to be painting um, a tree with no leaves, I would wanna be pretty intricate with my branches because um, I want you to be able to see all the details. Um, but if I'm gonna be painting a tree with some leaves or some buds on it, I might not need as much um, as much branches as I would if I was painting a, a fall scene, um, you know, like a late fall or winter scene. Um, so I'm going to add a few more branches, but I do want to show you how to add in some leaves or some buds. This to me screams like late spring, early summer. So we'll get some bright um, kind of like uh, leaves on this because, you know, when leaves first start coming out, they are not super dark green. They're not like the normal like grass green. They're like a light green because their baby leaves are coming out and they're they still got to develop their color and everything. But then again, we also have to keep in mind that this is not complete daylight either. So we're not going to have the brightest of all colors. So we'll get we'll get it though. We'll make it look good.
All right, so I'm going off my canvas a little bit. You guys know how I feel about that. And we'll, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some leaves next, and then we'll add the highlights to the tree and the leaves. All right, I just want to get a few more little branches. Remember, apply very little pressure for these little tiny branches. And you want branches off of branches off of branches. And I could go on and I could add some more branches, but just for time's sake and the fact that this is a little tutorial, I'm not going to go too crazy. So I think we have a good amount of branches here. And next I'm going to go actually searching for something I should have had in the beginning. And that is kind of a rough around the edges brush, uh, paintbrush. So I'm going to be looking for a paintbrush that does not have to have perfect bristles. And anybody who paints for a long time is going to be able to find a paintbrush without perfect bristles. So as you can see, this is a very old, rough, beat up uh, paintbrush, all right? Which actually makes it great for painting uh, leaves on trees. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with, um, let's see. I'm going to go in with some mint green because that was a pretty bright color. All right, I'll put some on my plate there and then we'll go in with maybe little hints of blue also. But we already have some of that on our plate over here. Some of this blue color. I just want to be careful not to pick up the black that was in there. All right, so I'm taking my old paintbrush. I'm not going to get it wet right now. I'm just going to mix a little bit of this blue and mint to get kind of like a darker um, color for my leaves. I don't want it to be black, but I want it to have like a little bit of a darker color. And then we'll add the mint uh, later on uh, on top of it for some highlights. So, all right, so I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. Right now I just have enough to kind of make some uh, shapes and impressions. I've got a little dry paint there. Oops. I messed up right there, guys. I just smudged wet paint. That's okay. Um, we can actually cover that up a little later. Um, so I'm just going to go in with this and I'm just going to dab very lightly. Just not a lot. Okay, I'm just going in. I don't want a lot because this is not um, this is not fall. This is not summer. This is literally just springtime where the the buds are starting to come out. I don't want a lot. All right. Sometimes you might end up with little clusters where there's more than others. Um, that's why you don't want to put a lot of paint on your brush either. If you put too much paint on your brush you're gonna end up with some clusters that might be too big like maybe like this area right here but if you end up with that and you can't and you feel like you can't fix it you actually can just by adding a few more branches and making it look like it's kind of naturally supposed to be thicker in that area you can truly fix just about anything when you paint all right we're not gonna add a lot this is just to make it look like the leaves are starting to open on this tree. All right, you might be thinking, well, this is weird. We're painting with like a turquoise, like a turquoise color. Why are we using that blue? Um, and the reason for that again is because um, it's it's either late in the evening or early in the morning, 
and where the sun is not shining through causing those bright colors to come fully out yet. As you can see, the brightness is along this edge of the mountain, but it's a little darker here and up here. Okay, so that's the look I'm going for right now. Um, and we will, we will add some more highlights to brighten this up a little bit, but I want it to look like it's not like fully daylight yet. Okay. And if your if your paint starts to look a little bit too fuzzy, go ahead dip it back in the paint. Just don't pick up too much. All right, we don't want too much paint. We want just enough to give the illusion that the leaves are just starting to come out. And you can make this as full or as light as you want to. Um I want it to definitely look like there's leaves starting to open, but I don't want it to be too, um, too many leaves. All right, if you need to pick up some more paint, go ahead and mix it up. Still maintaining that dark color. Um, and the, also the reason why I'm choosing the blue is because a lot of times, um, when you're painting, you want to stay with a very similar um, color scheme. You don't want to have a lot of contrast in your paintings when you're doing landscape paintings. You don't want to, I mean, you want to have contrast, but you don't want to have like a lot of varying colors. Like I wouldn't want to have green and orange and purple and black and like I, unless I was doing Halloween, <laughs> but we're not. We're just sticking with some springtime, a springtime feel here. I'm getting sides of some of my canvases. All right. Um, if I wanted to, to kind of fix that spot that I messed up, I could go in with some of that color I used earlier and I could just simply add, add a line. And it's literally that easy. There's no, there's nothing too crazy about it. My daughter is getting off the bus, so she might come barging in in a minute. All right. And we can just add lines wherever we want to. All right. So now I'm going to go back in with that blue. And we, we fix that one spot. Just by doing that one simple little thing, just by adding another branch, we fixed it. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit up on the top. Okay. We're almost done with this part, and then we'll go in to add the highlights. Hey, Regan, baby. Hi. Just painting a picture. Cool. Okay, so you can see it does look like there's some buds on this tree. It's not overwhelmed. If I was going to do a summertime tree, um, you know, where it's full in full bloom, I would maybe use a little bit bigger of a brush. Still, you would want to use a jagged brush, um, something that's not too um, perfectly um, kept. And when I dry off my when I dry off my brushes like this, I literally just kind of dab and like twist because I don't care because this is just my beat up damage brush that I use for leaves a lot. Okay. All right. So now I will go in with my fine liner brush to add in some highlights to this tree. All right. And I'm going to use a little bit, um, a little bit more blue. And maybe even some mint green for this. Okay, I'm sticking with that same color scheme. If I wanted to, I could add in little hints of um, brown in here. Maybe, uh, you know, a little tiny bit of like a pumpkin spice color to make it. Because sometimes trees will hold on to like um, 
browns, oranges, some yellows or grays. Um, so you can get creative. I've seen all sorts of different colors on trees. Um, but now whenever you're adding highlights, you want to think about where the light is hitting. All right. And for me, the light is coming in between these two mountains. This is the brightest point of my picture. All right, so this is where it's coming in from. And so I'm going to pretend that the sun is shining in these directions. So for me, I would add a little bit of, maybe like a little bit of a highlight here. Nothing crazy, just a little bit. All right, and I could take it all the way to the edge, but I don't want to cover up all my contrast. All right. All right, you don't want to cover up all the, the dark because you want to leave some contrast or else you're going to end up with a little bit of a problem and it's not going to look realistic. Okay. All right, but I'm going to go in because we want to focus on this tree. All right, so I'm using my fine liner brush. Again, you want to make sure your brush is wet. This brush is smaller, so it might be a little harder to water down your paint. All right, but we want to have thin paint, but we don't want to water or we don't want to have too much paint on our brush. All right, so I've got very little paint on my brush and I'm just going to go in on the edges where my sun is hitting. So it's going to be on the right side of like my big branches and stuff. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to kind of gently curve and outline with the tree right but you want to think about where your light is hitting and I can go in so for me it's not bright enough so I'm just adding some more of that mint green color I don't know if you can see it just blending a little bit more of that mint green color with my blue and I'm going to add in some of that highlight on the right side of my branches. Okay. I wouldn't want to go straight down here because I have another branch here and there's probably a shadow right here. So you do want to be mindful of your shadows and your other branches. All right, so I'm taking it down. We don't have a lot of sun peeking over this mountain, so I'm not even going to add a huge amount of color. We don't need a lot. We don't need a lot to give the illusion. All right, and I, I like to, when I do it, if you look at bark, a lot of times bark curves and bends with the light or with the tree. It kind of wraps around. The bark kind of takes on like a almost like a swirly shape so don't hesitate to go and look at your a tree outside in your yard and just watch the way that the bark kind of wraps around the tree almost like it's braiding itself to reinforce the tree to be stronger I know sometimes my tutorials get a little bit in depth with these details, but I think if you understand the way that a tree works, it'll make it easier to paint that tree. Okay, again, not going all the way down right here because I have a branch right here. Okay, we got to keep that in mind. I do want to, I'm going to, and for this, I'm mostly going to get like where I'm adding my highlights, I'm mostly just going to do it on my big, my bigger, thicker branches. I don't need to add highlights on my little tiny branches. Because if you notice any tree outside, um, you're not going to really see highlights on the little branches because they're so little you can't see them. <laughs> that, to put it plainly. Okay, and I'm just going to get 
these highlights in. Just adding in little bits wherever I see a big part of a branch. I'm going to water down my paint again. So I did put some white on my palette, but I don't even need it, I don't think. I'm not going to do anything with the white this time. Sometimes I do that. A lot of times, I mean I use white in most pictures that I paint. Um, but then, so I usually almost always add it, but sometimes I don't need the white. All right, and I'm using very little paint, uh, very little pressure, so that way I can get um, the look I'm going for. And I'm kind of just gently wrapping and fading and blending into this tree. Just to give it some light. All right, and let's see. Now, I'll actually have this one little part right here. I don't know what happened here, so I'm just going to go in and cover that up. That's from earlier. I don't know what I did there. Oh, actually, it looks like dry paint. Hang on. Maybe not. Go in with some black. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to go in and add um, a little bit of highlight on the leaves. Not a lot, so I'm going to use my jagged paintbrush and that mint green. I'm going to dab some off a little because I don't need a lot, but I'm going to just go ahead and add in some highlights. I don't want a lot of green because I want to keep that blue because it shows that it's like nighttime and the sun's not really shining on this. You might have some more green up at the top because maybe the sun is hitting the top a little bit more. I had a little bit too much green down there, but that's all right. So I'm going to add a little bit more green up at the top than I would down at the bottom because light always hits more at the top of a tree than it does at the bottom usually. For the obvious reason, it's trees are tall. And you can see that by doing this, it's brightening up the tree a little bit. We could even go in and we'll add a couple little hints of yellow also. But we're not going to want to add a lot because we don't want to overwhelm the picture. Okay, we're almost done with this green, and then we'll grab some yellow. All right, I'm just getting the tops and the edges of my canvas. All right, the last step and then we'll sign. Just a little bit of yellow, not a lot at all. I probably even put too much on my plate. But I'm just gonna mix some in with this green. All right, I'm gonna use very little. And I'm mostly gonna concentrate this around the top where the light might really be hitting. So I don't want it to be on every branch. Just where I think the light might hit most.
right, and we'll add just a touch of it to some other areas too. I'll show you in a second. And you'll notice that this is really going to make it stand out. You always want to make sure you have contrast in your pictures. Okay, so let me get my fine liner brush. And now I'll go in with those little highlights of yellow. The rest of this, we're not going to need a lot of yellow. So don't use a lot. We're just going to add a little bit. A little bit. We don't want a lot because we don't want to overwhelm and take away from any of the other color in this. All right, but we do want to let it be known that the sun is hitting little bits of this. Right, very little pressure, very little paint. Okay. All right, and now we'll just go in and add a little bit on top of some of these parts where not a lot though because this is really not very exposed to the sun. Okay, and then we'll sign. So I really appreciate you guys watching with me. If you found this to be helpful, please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you did find it to be helpful, I would love it if you gave this video a like and uh, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss out on any new content, any new tutorials. I love to um, show you my tips and tricks um, so that way I can uh, help you feel more confident in your painting um, because painting should be enjoyable, not frustrating. I've had frustrating moments for myself and I want to see you get through those too so you can enjoy it. All right, but make sure you always sign your paintings, always practice and have fun. And until next time, bye guys.